Welcome to Circuit Valley. I'm Gaurav. Today in this video, I'm going to show you the next version of my ADR1399 slash LM399 reference board. In this next version of the board, there's a quite major change happen. You see, previously there was a trim part here. We're supposed to adjust the 10 volt value exactly to the 10 volt. And now that trim part is gone because the uh, trim part itself has uh, its wiper resistance and wiper resistance has quite a bit of drift and the wiper itself is not very stable of a thing and it, it was also at 100 ppm component uh, temperature wise so it was not a very nice thing to have in the circuit so in the second version I have removed this trim pot and you see these small two sets of jumper they adjust the value of this 10 volts op amp output you remember this circuit has two outputs one is directly from Zener which is around going to be 7 volts 6 point something something or 7.1.24 something like that and the another value, another output is 10 volts. So this 10 volt is generated by this op amp, and op amp's gain is adjusted by these multiple solder bridges. You can see on this, the J5 and J8 are mounted, and on this side J13 is mounted. So this combination can be selected between different registers. Schematic of this new board is also available on my website www.circuitvalley.com. And this particular board provides you more stability. It's the second version of my LM399 slash ADR1399 board. It says version 3.1 because I have done many revisions of it but using this ADR1399 this is the second revision and it works really well it provides really stable output it comes with an enclosure as well in this video I'm also going to show you how I age and test these circuits because uh, if you buy this LM399 or ADR1399 initially for uh, multiple hours of operation they have quite a bit of drift so they need to be aged a little bit before they can be used in circuit so I put them in a test circuit, age them for 4 weeks before putting them or before calibrating them and measuring them. So I'll show you what I made. So my test chick is based on this PCB and these small little poke pins which you see on your screen. Maybe I'll show you a little close up. On the main PCB I have made few test points. Let's turn the back. So this is one test point, this is one test point and this is one, this is one, this is one. So one, two, three, four, five, at least six test points are there. So these test points, they directly connect to the PCB, like this orientation. So these pogo pins, they will press onto these test points and you will have something like this. This bottom PCB is exactly based on this particular PCB. You can see these big alignment holes. There are four different holes and at least three different sizes this is the biggest hole a little bit smaller same size and smallest hole this is to prevent plugging of stuff like this or other way around so these holes are orientation hole this PCB is exactly same as this PCB holes are exactly matching and the test pads are also exactly matching this is GND, V bus, V in, 10 volt, VZ, 15 volt regulated, 16 volt which is the input so these old test pens, all test pads right now only uh, right now only five of the test pens are mounted. And what I have also made a little contraption with the 3D printed. This is the PETG printed. I have run out of the orange filament, so I have printed in two colors. But this test PCB, you see this alignment hold, they perfectly match to this PCB, and the PCB fits in like that. And let's take it out. And let's put in the PCB itself. We need to clean it a bit. So let's put in the PCB. I hope we have the right orientation. So this is how the test fixture looks. Power input comes on the left side, output goes on the right side. I'll also show you what is those connectors and the PCB fits into this test stick something like this first of all ground pin aligns completely in the back and this is the most compact solution which I can think of something like this very easily it fits comes out also very easily something like this so you put your board something like this align the pads and leave it like that I have made quite a few of them I'll show you my rest of the setup for the test fixture. So this is how this 3D printed contraption looks like. The board have been 
multiple times 3d printed and individual and you can see I have put array of around how many are they there are eight pieces and uh, they are all powered from a single power input which is connected to my bench power supply you can power this board with two power supplies alternatively from to test both of the USB and the primary power input primary power input is 16 to 20 volts and the secondary power input is USB so this right now it's feeding in the primary power input and all of the boards are getting powered from primary power input and they are sharing the power using this ribbon cable because these banana connectors they are quite expensive and if you have multiple banana connectors you will also need multiple banana cables so I have made this IDC cable and this cable is same cable goes through all of the connectors and supply powers to all of the boards so they, all of the boards get powered if you want to plug it in or plug, take it out you can easily take out a board very very easily something like that and plug it in back in even while it's running generally I don't do that while it's running but you can do that because the test pads and everything else it's so well placed that uh, they do not mind all that much so this is my test setup for aging and testing these boards for multiple multiple weeks I have few more test setups available and uh, but this is my one of the best idea and it involves only one small 3d printed part and you can easily have this kind of contraption it's involved only one 3d printed part and you can easily test your board this is how you can easily test your board and be prepared for it so that's it for this video I hope you liked it and this new solution for LM399 slash ADR1399 with resistors I hope it delivers more stable output